Even though we may be happy if we don't recognize it, we will never be able to make use of that happiness as, as an opportunity of practicing the Dharma. When we're happy, if we don't recognize its happiness, then that happiness won't become the favorable condition to practice the Dharma. If you're not ill, if, you, if you're very healthy, if you're wealthy, uh, at that time you're, health, uh, you're very happy. But when people are in such happy situation, you probably don't even recognize that you're happy, that you're lucky. So you should not waste such happiness. You, you have to use such happiness on the path of genuine Dharma. Um, and we will, uh, and and we should not expect some for some extra happiness that will come our way. Don't feel so uh, greedy for more happiness. In fact, you already have everything. You're already you should already be contented. When people ask you whether you're happy, you should say yes. I'm the most happy. Why is that? Because I'm healthy. I uh, I have a healthy mentality. I have lots of prov uh, providings. Um, I recently received a bonus of fifteen hundred dollars. So I. I have everything. I have freedom <laughs> to walk <laughs> underneath the, the, um, the blue sky and white clouds. I have everything. But if you don't think in such a way, rather you you think in in the way that I'm not happy now, but I wish I could be happy. In this way, I think that's what most of the non-practitioners think. When people ask them, are you happy? They would say that, well, I am not happy now, but if I'm doing a project, I am currently um, planning to cooperate with so-and-so and with the plan with our um, project management and so on, I think eventually I will become as wealthy as the universal monarch. And then at that time, I think I wouldn't have too much difficulties to become happy. I think this kind of sense of um, longing and um, um, a sense of looking for more, looking for extra mentality uh, is very common in our world. Uh, therefore, next time when people ask you, whether you're happy or not, well, you're happy. You have everything already. You should be content. Otherwise, our desire could go limitless, and there's really no end to it. There was a king. His name is uh, uh, the king uh, Uposatha. He has all the wealth in the three realms, um, and at the end, he could sit. He he has the same hierarchical seating with Indra himself, but he couldn't get content with all the wealth and happiness he has, and then he fall into the human realm and died over there. That was um, uh, described in the Uposatha Sutra. It says in that in the Sutra of Cause and Conditions, it says that even if the sky rains uh, precious jewels, the, the greedy ones won't be contented. So the just like that, the foolish ones don't even have a time to feel content. That's what the wise ones should understand. Uh, I think everyone's very different. Um, we have different merit. We have different life. But you should you should think that whatever you have is really your own merit, uh, and you should be happy about that. Maybe you're not so wealthy right now. That just means that you don't have such wealth in your ca causes and conditions. Then you should think I've already have everything that I should have, and uh, similar applies to your uh, to your appearance and so on. Instead of looking everywhere at all. All times. So the antidote to do this is to apply practice wherever it is appropriate and above all to savor the nectar of contentment. So whenever we need to work with this at all times we have to um, unite the practice of the uh, of the precious Dharma with our daily activities. As we studied yesterday from the Buddhist uh, Bequist Sutra, it says that the contented ones, even if they're sleeping on the ground, they feel 
happy. So this is quite important. Uh, according to Master Lianqi, he said that um, people who feel content understand what contentment is. The afflictions in one's mind could be eliminated in one moment. Some of the Western uh, ecologist, uh, economists would think that uh, we shouldn't feel a sense of contentment. Otherwise, we don't have any um, intention to progress anymore, to continuously uh, progress anymore. That is that is not good. So we have to continuously to uh, to go forward, to try our best, and we have to have the aspiration more and more. In fact, I think this is the kind of spirit that is a little too arrogant. In whichever way, it is very difficult to fulfill our desire. Um, to a certain extent, you have to understand and have to learn to be content. Of course, you can try hard. You should try hard. I think, uh, however, I think in terms of wealth, you eventually you'll be able to understand it doesn't matter how much you try it it doesn't really help uh, according to narajuna he said that the the gen the the most precious wealth is a contentment so if you understand how to be content and then the dilute, then the uh, defiled uh, wealth in this world uh, are not necessity to you, but contentment is a nectar. So um, we should be relaxed with whatever we have, let it be social status, let it be any kinds of things that we desire in this world, then in such a way we will be, um, we will be uh, at ease. Otherwise, if we continuously to chase after them, the poorer we are, the uh, more scarcity mentality we have. I think many people uh, have genuine experience of that. Even though we may be happy, uh, uh, excuse me, um, and then it uh, says that uh, there are other ways of turning happiness into paths, especially those based on recalling the kindness of the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and on the instructions for training in bodhicitta, but this will do for now. Uh, so whenever you feel any kind of little happiness, they are all from the blessings, and uh, um, they're all from the kindness of the Buddha, Buddhas, uh, the Buddhas and uh, uh, Bodhisattvas. I should understand that's from the three jewels. And the cold uh, when you're in the cold cold area, um, when you receive when you can feel the warm sunlight, when it is quite hot outside, but you feel this cool breeze. In fact, those are all the blessings from the three jewels. So any little bit of happiness that you can experience in your mind stream are all um, the teachings, are, are all the um, things that you can use in terms of practicing bodhicitta as well. Uh, once you feel any bit of happiness, you could think that let all sentient beings experience whatever I'm, I am experiencing. Let me offer this to all sentient beings. Um, so that is in terms of bodhicitta practice and the next one talks about uh, then unite happiness into unite ha the the practice of uh, transforming happiness into enlightenment with your actual practice um, we shouldn't be arrogant the, the nature of happiness is in, in fact a suffering the nature is impermanent the nature is empty the nature is uh, non self so you can contemplate it in such a way uh, you could be happy today you not necessarily tomorrow your happiness are just very um, superficial right now they're they're nothing uh, they're very illusory there's nothing to grasp onto but this kind of happiness could become the cause of suffering so this is from this angle and then Tempinima said that but this is this will do for now uh, I guess he must be really really busy uh, so he only talked until here as with the using suffering as a path so with happiness too you need to go to a solitary retreat environment and combine this with practices of purification and accumulation merit and wisdom. 
Uh, so you can go to solitary retreat and so on, and then practice, uh, for example, mandala, uh, offering to the Dharmapalas, and uh, uh, chant the hundred syllable mon uh, mantra, and so on. So this is the same as uh, uh, practice in solitary retreat. And then the second aspect is says that the absolute dimension, um, in fact, it's similar as previous ones when we talked about uh, the suffering in the ultimate, in the absolute dimension. Um, so you have to go through the recognition from the four extremes. Is it born from self, from other, from both, from no cause? Um, and after this kind of uh, uh, inference, you see that the name of happiness doesn't even exist. They don't even mention its uh, uh, existence or its, uh, its um, uh, itself. So in, um, in absolute truth, um, in fact, there's no happiness to gain, and that is a rather uh, uh, unfathomable realization. So how could you have such happiness that uh, when I asked everyone, do you, is suffering existent, all of you said not existent. In fact, later on, I went back home and I thought, oh, so lucky that nobody said it's existent, otherwise it would be rather a little bit embarrassing for all of us. Um, so uh, since yesterday, we agreed that since suffering doesn't exist in absolute truth, then we would agree that happiness do not exist in absolute truth either, because the name doesn't even exist. Therefore, what is the happiness that we're grasping onto then, if it doesn't exist in uh, absolute truth? And uh, the, tr the happiness in uh, relative truth is so easy to change. What is there to grasp onto. So when you're happy, don't get so arrogant because um, uh, in such a way you won't be able to succeed in your practice and probably end up unsuccessful, which is not uh, which is not wanted by anyone. As a practitioner, I think we should we should maintain a rather balanced state of mind. When you're suffering, you're also at ease and you continue with whatever activities you're doing for the sentient beings and do not give up on that. That is a true practitioner. And like there are people nowadays who would cry out loud and the tears become um, larger and deeper than the Indian Ocean. And when they're happy, they laugh out loud so that the 3000 world could hear the laughter. Even the Indra would feel that this person's laughing out loud so much. What is so funny? And they would hold up their ears and uh, try to stop you. So I think this kind of unbalanced situation and mood is really not necessary. Uh, let's try to uh, maintain certain kind of uh, equanimity between the both. Um, the suffering and the happiness, in fact, are uh, the two most um, strong emotions. And whenever the two strong emotions uh, manifest in you, try to transform that into the path of enlightenment. Tomorrow we will finish the teaching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>